Hey everyone, DMZ Season 5 Reloaded added a new rare gun camo called Serpentine. I decided I was going to make a solo attempt at this, even though on the surface it seemed like impossible. However, by some miracle and a few tricks up my sleeve, I was able to unlock the Serpentine skin solo. Sort of. This gun skin is one of the most difficult skins to acquire in Call of Duty history and requires players to navigate four unique maps and have a total understanding of DMZ all without dying. In this video, I'll go over all of the strategies that I use to get every single item on each map, as well as survival tips that are going to help you along the way if you decide to go down this road, whether it be solo or in a squad. Keep in mind that this challenge is significantly easier with a full team. But if you want to get crazy and try it solo, then Godspeed. Okay, so here's what the Serpentine camo looks like. We've got it here on an M13, and if you're noticing right away, it is not the brightest and most beautiful camo you've ever seen in your life. In fact, it's pretty mid-grade, I'm not going to lie. Anyone going for the Serpentine camo isn't really going for the camo itself, but rather the prestige of actually unlocking it in the first place. Anyone that you see running around with this camo is a literal god in DMZ. So let's talk about exactly what you need to do. I'm going to do a quick overview of everything that's going to go on in this video, and then I'm going to give you the quick tips and tricks on each item to help you get better at acquiring this and hopefully getting your hands on the Serpentine camo. So first thing we have to do is get the Ancient Oil. And the Ancient Oil requires a Damascus dog tag, a chlorine, three AQ laptops, and a diamond bit drill. Once you have that, you're going to take the Ancient Oil into a Sheikah and you're going to go kill the bomb maker and grab the bomb maker screwdriver with a GPU and 200,000 cash. And that's going to create the bomb maker's blend when you trade it in and for a barter at the buy station. And then you're going to take that bomb Maker's blend into Vondel, and you're going to trade that along with the Bullfrog's Blowtorch off that boss with two calling cards off the Scavenger and two Vintage Wines to craft the premium liquor. And once you have the premium liquor, then you got to go back into Kosha Complex and trade in the premium liquor with a comms vest, a stealth vest, and a medic vest in order to get the Black Cell Hand Cream. And once you have that, you trade in the Black Cell Hand Cream, a Skeleton Key, Heavy Chopper Fuel, and the Chemist Acid or the Serpentine Camo. It is a mouthful, it is a lot, and there is a lot to unpack here, and I'm gonna walk you through every step of the way on my solo run right now. Okay, so let's talk about the actual basics here. Number one, you have to have a secure bag, and you basically need a medium bag or a large bag within that secure bag at all times. Obviously, you're gonna want self-revives. You're gonna need wallet funds, because you're gonna be spending a lot of money on personal exfills and buying L2 restricted keys if needed. You definitely need a scuba mask, the one of the most important savior items in the game right now, especially on Vondel and places with a lot of water. The scuba mask is absolutely vital. You're going to need a skeleton key, not only for the end when you need to trade it in, but having that skeleton key can be huge in other areas, and I'll walk you through that in a second. Also, the castle entrance key on Ashika Island, as well as the weapons locker key, having a full three stack on the weapons locker key and a single use on the entrance key is a huge help as well. As far as the actual vest that you use for this run, I personally ran stealth the entire time trying to go under the radar. I didn't kill a single player this entire run as a solo attempt on the Serpentine Camo. So you can do this without killing a player one single time. I used stealth the whole way up until the very, very end. So highly encourage you to use that as your primary vest. Making a stealth vest is obviously not very difficult at all. Just one games console, one comic book, and an encrypted USB stick. So those are like the actual basics. And the reason why you need to have a secure bag is because all of these rare items, the ancient oil, the bomb makers blend, the premium liquor, the black cell hand cream, all of those four items are not blue items. Meaning that when you acquire them, you can't just take that item and put it into your stash back in your forward operating base and save it for another time. So basically when you get involved on this run, you have to see it through all the way to the end. You can't just do part of it and then go play with your friends and then come back and do the next part. You are locked in once you have decided to go for the Serpentine Camo. Now, personally, I find that to be silly. I think the Damascus dog tag alone is extremely rare. I've had more, over 2,000 hours played in DMZ since its launch, and I've only run into about five or six of them. And it is a silly, silly thing to have it locked behind a Damascus tag to start your run. Personally, I would rather see it be like a gold dog tag, or maybe there's another way to get to a Damascus, like trading two gold with the scavenger to get a Damascus tag. Or maybe even you get yourself to a Damascus tag on your body and you can use that to start the mission. Because 
the disappointing part is is this this run is so much fun doing this challenge for the serpentine camo is so much fun it's so exhilarating there's high stress really feeling that pressure and anxiety the whole time it's it's really an incredible feeling something that Quite frankly, DMZ lacks in its casual nature on a regular basis, but this, this is true extraction shooter intensity at its finest. The problem is most players are never even going to be able to do it because they're never going to find a Damascus tag in the first place. They're just, too, it's just too rare of an item to allow players to experience this wonderful challenge. And so to me, the Damascus is a bummer, but it is what it is. So how do you get a Damascus tag? Well, obviously you're just killing players until you see one and you need to have that secure bag on your body at all times in case you do come across a Damascus tag. Now, are there other ways to get a Damascus that are basically cheesing it? Yeah. Now, normally I can't stand cheesing stuff, but in this case, because the content of the actual challenge itself, other than getting the Damascus tag is so much fun and so exhilarating, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold it against anybody that wants to go and cheese for the Damascus tag. I do right here. Someone from my stream came in and just gave me one, let me assassinate him with it. And now I had a Damascus tag and I can start my run. Now, not everyone has a family of stream friends that can come and help drop tags for you, but you only need one friend with a Damascus tag to drop for you. And here's how you would do it. You, if you wanted to cheese for a Damascus tag, you could come in with a duo or a trio. And one of you has the Damascus tag on you. And that player stays back in spawn or wherever in some safe place while the other player goes out and assimilates with another team. Then once they've assimilated, they're on a different team. You can then come back to your, your friend with the Damascus tag, shoot them, kill them full, grab the Damascus dog tag and go extract. And make sure that you've got a secure bag on so that when you extract that Damascus dog tag, you are now ready to start your run for the Serpentine Camo. Now, if you have a third member of your team, that third member can then res your teammate that was fully killed, the one that had the Damascus tag. And now you two will go extract. And now there'll be two Damascus dog tags, the one of the player that solo killed the Damascus person and the person that had the Damascus in the first place because they actually did not lose their streak because they got out in the end. So now you've got two Damascus dog tags that you can work with to start your run. Okay, now that we have a Damascus dog tag and we are diving into this thing, we need to go right to Kosha Complex. We've already got a secure bag. We already have a large bag in the secure bag. I've got myself hooked up with some self revives. I'm good to go. I have a scuba mask always at all times. I don't really need wallet funds for this one. I don't really need skeleton keys for anything here. I could bring in 50K for an L2 restricted if I was feeling the pressure inside of Kosha Complex because that is where we need to go for the ancient oil and we need to barter the Damascus tag with a chlorine, three AQ laptops, and a diamond bit drill. So the chlorine is easy. Just look for those wooden crates that are on the ground in all four of the major entrances, including the alpha cluster. It's super common. You're gonna see it alongside acetic acid and formaldehyde, and, chlor and chlorine is right there. You can't miss it. Now, they also need three AQ laptops, which are relatively exclusive to Kosha Complex. Yes, you can get them in hidden stashes on the other maps, but it's not realistic. Just go into Kosha Complex. You can grab all three AQ laptops in a single run. They are in the four starting areas typically, especially behind blue doors, and they're always loose loot in these spots. So always be looking for laptops, and anytime you see a laptop just loose loot anywhere in Kosha Complex, it is almost certainly an AQ laptop. And what you can do is you can go in any entrance you want for this one, go into the middle, and then go back to any of the other entrances, open the door from the middle section, and go back through old spawn areas that no one came through, and look for AQ laptops there. And while you are doing that, you do need to make sure that you find a car battery and a jumper cable to get into the alpha cluster. And there is a guaranteed car battery and jumper cable behind B2 and A1. So since you're already going back to these starting areas to look for AQ laptops, make sure that you just go to B2 and A1 so you can find your laptops there along with a car battery and a jumper cable. Of course, you could bring those in with you from outside. They're pretty common inside regular gas stations, but just notate that they are guaranteed in times two in two of the starting zones here inside Kosha Complex. Okay, so now that we have all those items, we need to head into the Alpha Cluster and we absolutely need the RAD detector. There are two RAD detectors in the two offices in the center area. So make sure that you are grabbing one of those two RAD detectors because it is required in order to do the puzzle to get the diamond bit drill. And so once we get into the Alpha Cluster, we are going to head to the right and we are gonna shine the RAD detector on this door in the back right of the room and above it, we're gonna see 
three letters, and the letters are going to look kind of weird, and they're also different variations. If you're not familiar with Cyrillic, which I'm not either really myself, but there are multiple variations that look like an A. You've got a lowercase looking R, a lowercase looking B, a capital B. Just keep a real close eye on what it looks like. And we're going to go in and then we're going to shine the rad detector on all the blackboards that we need to in order to find out the code itself. So each of those letters corresponds to a number and the blackboards can show the letter equating to a number. And not all blackboards are viable. So we need to kind of hit all these blackboards until we find two out of the three numbers because we can use trial and error to understand the third number. So we really only need two numbers out of the three. And we're going to go and hit all these blackboards and decipher the code. Now you're going to look for a, that those symbols and there's going to be like a little arrow or an equal sign that goes to a number and each board is different. So you do have to kind of have some familiarity with this area. That's why I was saying earlier, coming in with no knowledge, it's going to be almost impossible for you to knock out the serpentine skin. So hopefully you have some understanding of kosher complex and how this works, but use the blackboards, find the code, go back to the door, open it up, and you're gonna have the diamond bit drill inside. Now I use the map that you're seeing here on more than one occasion to learn this area. Obviously, if you're not super comfortable with it, you need to get comfortable with it. Use a map, understand the area, keep going in, don't be afraid, and you'll get to a place where you really have it down to a science on how to understand where to go and what is next to make sure that you're maximizing your time in there and not dilly-dallying and getting in trouble with time. Or if you get pushed by a squad, who knows what could happen. So the more comfortable you are, the easier this is going to be. So learn Kosha Complex, because we do have to come back here again. Now, once we have the Diamond Bit Drill, we're not done yet. We have all the four items that we need. We actually need to go to the buy station, which is in the factory area, right where both of the bosses are. Prior to going in towards the boss, you'll find the guy, the shopkeeper, that has the dead drop. And we're going to go ahead and barter at this area. And to get the key, if you didn't know, the factory key is in the middle area of Kosha Complex. It can spawn in one of five places. They're like inside these little vents that you have to crouch into. And once you find it, you can just head north. And on the north wall is where the factory entrance is. And whichever door you go into, you're going to kind of look around in there and you're going to see the shopkeeper. And you're going to walk up to the basic buy station. There are two buy stations that the shopkeeper has. One is a normal buy station, one is a secure buy station. The secure buy station we're going to be hitting later on down the road but for now for the ancient oil it is a standard barter at the normal buy station and you're going to barter and now that you have the ancient oil you're going to make sure that you re-equip your secure bag a common thing that we were seeing a lot myself and i did this run for for wesley and stod as well we were sometimes forgetting at the last second to re-equip our secure bag so for for all that is holy make sure that you do remember to re-equip your secure bag, or you could lose all of your progress. So making sure you have that secure bag on, very important. Tenth time I've said it, don't forget, secure bag, secure bag, secure bag. So now that we have the ancient oil, we need to go for the bomb makers blend, which is on Ashika Island. And that's gonna require the ancient oil, of course, 200,000 cash, a GPU, and the bomb makers screwdriver. So the bomb maker screwdriver is actually dropping off of the bomb maker inside of the castle. And thankfully, the GPU spawn inside of the weapons lockers inside of the castle as well is very high. It's about 33% per locker. So this is why I said earlier that we want to have not only a castle entrance key, but also a triple hit weapons locker key. We need that one to be pristine so we can open up all three and can guarantee effectively guarantee that you're going to get that GPU. Okay, so now we are inside of Ashika Island and the first thing you do, no matter which spawn you get, is to head into the waterways and go underneath where the juggernauts spawn and you're going to take the zip line up to the secret underground entrance into the castle this is absolutely the way to do it you're just going to come in right away you're not going to wait for anything you're going to get right in, in there as fast as you can go up that zip get in the door and start clearing it out and go right to the bomb maker and kill him take his screwdriver and you're going to go back downstairs and you're going to use that three starred weapons locker key that you have and you're going to open up all three of those and you're going to make sure that you snag a gpu and of course before you came in you were bringing 200,000 cash from your wallet obviously we need to be bringing 200k in from our wallet we're not going to sit around on a chic island of all places trying to acquire 200,000 with these rare items in our inventory so make sure you bring in that 200k from your wallet 
Also, while you're here, there is one exception to dilly dallying on Ashika Island during this challenge, and that is the scavenger. So the scavenger is, in my opinion, most common on Ashika Island because of how much PVP there is and how close proximity and small the island is in itself. So there are a lot of instances where you might run into the scavenger. If you see the scavenger, kill him. You need two calling cards off of the scavenger, and those two calling cards are inside backpacks of dead bodies that the scavenger protects against. And you need those on the next map that we're going to. So if we can hammer that out early, this would be a huge opportunity to do it. During my solo run, I went and looked, I didn't see him. So I ended up getting both of my calling cards on Vondel. However, if you have a chance to get them early, definitely capitalize on that opportunity. It's worth the risk in my opinion, because Vondel is the most annoying map. I had to go there like three separate times just to try and finish this up. Also, keep a lookout for Vintage Wine. Now, Vintage Wine, there are some strategies to get that on Vondel quite easily. However, you are at the mercy of RNG. So again, if you see a Vintage Wine or the Scavenger, make sure you grab those items. All right, so once you have the Bomb Maker Screwdriver, you've got your GPU, you still have that Ancient Oil in your hands, and you've got the 200K, go to the nearest buy station, anything that feels safe to you, maybe on the other side of the map, away from the current evacs that you see, you wanna take your own evac here. We're going to wanna bring a personal. So not only did you bring 200,000 for the actual item to be traded at the barter, but maybe bring in an extra 40K so that you can do your own personal evac on top of that. So hit that barter, barter for the bomb makers blend. You're gonna utilize the screwdriver, the GPU, the 200K and the oil, and now you're down to just the bomb makers blend. Make sure you have your secure bag back on. And now we're going to extract and get onto Vondel. So Vondel is the most annoying map of all of them, in my opinion, because of the scavenger. The scavenger obviously is tricky to find. Now, one thing that's new as of season five reloaded is you can actually see where the scavenger has spawned without seeing the red circle. This is a very, very important thing to understand. The new scavenger buy station looks like a little handbag almost. Instead of a shopping cart, like we're used to seeing for buy stations, you can see one that almost looks like a little handbag, but has that shopping cart look to it. So you look for that on the map at all times and keep an eye out where pleads are. You can kind of get a sense to where he might be. Obviously, if you want to get aggressive and go kill him, your go kill players and then come back for what potentially is a scavenger spawn on players that you killed, that's fine too. But when you're running this solo, even in a group, safety at this point is a very, very paramount strategy. So to me, knowing just where to look for the scav and his unique buy station is huge. I also think it's extremely important to understand how to get to the M13 golden spawn. So there's a golden M13 spawn on Vondel. There's a lot of golden guns, but the golden M13 is unique and interesting in its own right because there is only one way in, okay? So there's only one way into where the M13 Golden is, and you need to know how to get there. And you already have a scuba mask, right? That's going to allow you to be underwater for a thousand meters plus. But knowing how to get to this spot is extremely, extremely important in case you get hunted. And if you do get hunted, the first thing you should do is get underwater and swim to this spot. It's such a great defensive position because the only way in is the water ladder that you have unless you open the door. So there's a door that is quote unquote stuck and as long as you don't open it from the inside, no one can get into that door. And the only way is from the ladder in which you are coming from. It's just a great place to hold up and play defense if you do get pushed. So let's talk about the vintage wine. So you need two vintage wine. And you're going to see a lot of refrigerators on Vondel. There are a couple different building types that have them. The one that I kind of memorized was this square building that has a singular rounded corner. There's like five of them on the map. You can go to that, that spot. There are three refrigerators in there and in fact there is like a wine cabinet that's looking that looks wooden that is also a fridge so make sure you're checking that along with any refrigerator that you see those that little building is nice there's also stadium so the stadium has two concession stands outside on the south side of the stadium and you can definitely go there there's six total fridges for you to check there and there's also a bunch of fridges actually inside of stadium so if you have the stadium key or an extra skeleton key that has one use on it you can use that to get in there. There's like over 10 more refrigerators in there for you to loot as well, all in the concession areas up above and below on both floors. A couple other good free areas for refrigerators is the barista bag. The barista bag has five fridges right next to it. So you can check that. Also aquarium slash zoo. So up above where, right where the drop down is to get into the aquarium, there are a bunch of fridges up there. 
as well as a food court just to the west that has a bunch of fridges also. So you're just gonna endlessly come in and hit all of these refrigerators. It took me three separate visits to Vondel in order to get both calling cards and two vintage wine. So don't be afraid to re the map if you have to. And the last item that we need is the Bullfrog's Blowtorch. And the Bullfrog's Blowtorch drops, you guessed it, off of the Bullfrog. He drops sometimes multiple Blowtorches, so make sure you're picking up the right one. There's like sometimes four standard Blowtorches and one Bullfrog's Blowtorch, so make sure you're grabbing the right one. And you can kill this guy a number of different ways, the Bullfrog. You can jump on top of him as he's driving by and just fire endless rounds into the hood. That'll blow him up, but it can blow you up with him. So make sure you have that self-res in case you get down by his explosion. Now, do be careful when you're mounting onto the Bullfrog. He can run you over and full kill you. So make sure you are not over committing and do not let him run you over. You can also preemptively use an airstrike, a precision airstrike kind of in his path and he drives right into the airstrike and it instantly blows him up. So there's a few different ways to kill him. The nice thing about it is once you kill him, you don't have to grab the case, obviously. So you can kind of kill him, grab that blowtorch and then immediately dip. And anyone that thinks maybe you were grabbing the case, they might push, but you're already gonna be long gone and you're not gonna be holding that case giving away your position. So getting that is not too big of a deal. So now you've got all the items that you need in order to trade up for the premium liquor. So you're gonna hit any buy station that you can see, preferably away from any kind of exfils that you see on the map, hit a buy station, get the premium liquor, buy yourself a personal exfil and get out of there without anyone knowing. Okay, now that we have the premium liquor, it's time to go after the black cell hand cream. And now we have to go back to Koshi Complex and we have to trade in a medic vest, a stealth vest, a comms vest, and a, the premium liquor in order to get this item. So there's a couple ways you can get these three vests. Obviously you already have a stealth vest on probably, but you kind of want to keep that for the final run back into Almazra. So another strategy that I took was bring in a skeleton key and hit the sniper hideout. So the sniper hideout is in Akdar village, which has a comms vest and a stealth vest guaranteed in it. And you can go grab those two right there and knock off two off your list right away. And then you can go either kill the chemist and grab the medic vest, and while you're there, grab the uh, chemist acid, which is required for the final mission, or you can do a medic vest trade inside Kosha Complex, which is one tattered lab notes and two delta boards. And in fact, you can do any of the vest trades in here if you need to. The communications vest is one server tape orange and one formaldehyde. The stealth vest is one chlorine and one server tape black. And so those aren't too bad. But, you know, you're, you're forcing yourself to now go into Alpha Cluster again and use the jumper cables and the car battery, and you're kind of extending your run, and so you may not want to do that, but you may not have a choice, depending on where you stand at, the at this time. So just know that that is an option, because sometimes you kind of have to, you know, think lightly on your feet and make audibles with what you think is the best decision. One last good idea that you could do is go back and grab the diamond drill once again for a second time and go kill both of the bosses. And inside of the actual diamond safe, which is right behind where the sniper is killed, you can have access to a guaranteed comms vest, a guaranteed stealth vest. And I'm pretty sure it's a medic every single time, but I swear it used to be a tempered vest, but people have corrected me on this. Apparently it is a medic vest but at the very least you'll get two and you can trade for the last one if wrong, but 100% stealth and comms inside of the safe. Now that we have all three vests, it's time to go to the secure buy station. So the secure buy station every single time is different and you have to dead drop specific items from the shopkeeper in order to unlock the secure buy station. So the best way to do this is to, at your starting area, make sure you're looking for the glowing bluish type note that is going to be hanging on one of the walls in one of the entrance areas. All four entrance areas have one. It's always in the same place, so once you figure out where it is on each entrance, you can just go there and click on the note, and you'll see what the required items are. If for some reason you can't find that, the note is also at the actual shopkeeper right next to the dead drop. So worst case scenario, you can go to the shopkeeper and find out what he's looking for to unlock the secure. Typically, he's looking for a handful of different things. Sometimes they're notes, and the notes are found in the brown desks. And there's brown desks above the shopkeeper. And there's also brown desks um, in the parking lot entrance or B2 is the inner door if you're coming in from the inner door. So B2, you can find a bunch of desks in there, three at least. You'll see one in the water underneath if you take the Turok secret entrance to the factory. So you're gonna have to keep a lookout and know where these brown desks are. 
the delta boards, the alpha boards, all those boards, the electrical components, those are going to be found most commonly inside the little square boxes or inside the server racks in the alpha cluster. But the little boxes that you're seeing a lot as you traverse through the area have a really good chance of finding those boards. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, all of the chemical supplies like chlorine, formaldehyde, acetic acid, those types of things, those are all found once again in those square wooden boxes that are kind of low to the ground that you see in a lot of places as well. A lot of those are gonna be in the radiation entrance, which is out by the Oasis, or otherwise known as A2 when you're inside, looking at the door from the center area inside Kosha Complex. You're gonna see a lot there as well, but you're gonna find them all over the place, including Alpha Cluster. You can see them in the hallways as well. So now that you've got everything to unlock the secure buy station, go unlock that, trade in that medic vest, that stealth vest, the comms vest, and the premium liquor, and grab the black cell hand cream. Once you've got it, you can also go to the standard buy right there for 50,000 and buy an L2 restricted, which is gonna allow you to take one kind of a shorter, quicker, more safer way out. If you're feeling like there's somebody else in the complex with you, you can do that, or you can go back to the middle and evac in one of the normal evacs. All right, so now we're on the last step. This is the serpentine camo, the final countdown. We've got the black cell hand cream, and now we need the chemist acid, which spawns off the chemist. So if you did kill him previously, uh, in your raid before, you probably already have the chemist acid, but if you didn't, you do need to go kill him again and grab that chemist acid. It looks like a huge chemical container. It's light blue, you're gonna grab that. Then you also need the heavy chopper fuel, which spawns very regularly on the train, but you can also get it in the cave, the where the water is at Satik Caves, by the trucks in Rohan, by the sub in the port. Hafid Port has one as well, inside the left hangar at airport as well. So I find personally the train is the most consistent, but obviously can be highly contested, especially at the beginning of a raid. But also I like Rohan a lot and I also like sub base a lot. I feel like inside Hoffwood Port, that one is there very frequently. So you can go grab that as well. Obviously a helicopter is going to be mandatory pretty much for your survival here and making sure you get all these items safely. Having the helo is extremely safe for the most part, unless you get jokered a lot, which I ended up getting jokered twice when I was trying to trade in for the serpentine camo. So you do have to be careful. Using the flares don't, doesn't really work very well unless the missile is right on top of you. So if you do get missile locked, I would highly encourage you to land the helo um, or get into under, you know, behind a building. If you know which angle it came from, you can go behind a building and have the missile hit the building and kind of try and invade that way. You can also go under bridges to avoid these missiles if you're getting locked on by a joker, but it is it is a tough one. But once you have all the items, and of course you need to bring in your own skeleton key. So to get the serpentine camo, it's the chemist acid, the heavy chopper fuel, a skeleton key, which I'm not 100% sure if it has to be pristine or not. I was told that it does not have to be pristine. So I was just, that's just hearsay. I used a pristine one, but I'm assuming you can use any one that you want. And you've got the black cell hand cream and you now want to trade at the new secure buy station that is underneath Zaya Observatory. In the rubble, under the destruction from the Model for 3 event, you'll find that new buy station. It actually looks exactly like the Scavenger secure buy station, so that's the symbol you're looking for, and that's where you're going to trade for the Serpentine Camo. But unfortunately, you can't access that buy station unless it's covered in the gas. So. Only when the buy station is covered in the gas can you click on it and trade the four items for the Serpentine Camo, which means that you have to sit in Almazra for 20 plus five minutes, 20, 30 minutes, waiting for that whole raid to end so that you can go click on it. Now, of course, having a helicopter is going to be clutch here. Um, obviously not necessary, but having a helo is great for evasion. Now, one thing, a little tip that I would recommend if you do get a helo for it, just go out to Oasis, park the helo, all the way away from everything and sit in one of the passenger seats. And what that's gonna do is it's not gonna let the helo be gray on the minimap for other players to know that there's a helo there and it's not gonna use gasoline. So you can just sit there in a passenger seat of the helicopter, it doesn't use the gas and it's no longer showing on the map. So unless someone physically saw you go there or comes near you and sees it on the minimap, you're in a pretty safe spot. So another very, very important thing to notice is that the new buy station that's underneath Zaya Observatory does not actually appear if Zaya Observatory was marked 
as an active combat zone. So you'll know that right away. If you load up and you see the Zai Observatory as an active combat zone, you can look for the black smoke puffing up. That is a telltale sign, or you can just go near the zone and see if it pops up as an ACZ. And if it does, you're gonna wanna reset. And you're gonna wanna reset quickly. So make sure that you have enough money for a personal exfil so that in case you need to do that. Whether or not that's a bug or not, I do not know. So potentially you may be able to access this secure buy station in an ACZ later on, but at this time, you cannot. So the only way to know for sure is if you see that secure buy station, you'll see it from far away on the map. It looks just like the scavenger one, like I said. If you see it there, you're good to go. If you don't, reset. And once you have the storm engulfing that buy station and it's not an ACZ, and you have all four of those items, you're gonna go touch that buy station and you are going to barter for the serpentine camo. And that is it, and now you have it. You actually don't even need to survive all you need to do is complete that barter and you will have the serpentine camo. Of course, we want to survive, but you don't need to. You can still unlock the camo. Once you've clicked on it, it's all yours. Now, one other thing I will say, do not click on the contraband section on this new buy station that is underneath Zai Observatory. Currently at the time of this posting, that tab is bugged. And every time you click on it, you can no longer re-click the buy station. So you would literally have to relaunch another run of Almazra. So do not click on the contraband to avoid it bugging out and you not being able to interact with the, the buy station again. So make sure you don't click on contraband. So that's it, super easy, right? All right. Well, once again, I really love that they added this wonderfully difficult and exciting challenge to the game. And I do, of course, wish that they came up with a more realistic way to start the challenge so that a lot of players could experience it other than requiring that silly Damascus dog tag. But it is what it is. I hope this video helped you out and good luck on any attempts you might have to make a run at the Serpentine Camo. Thanks so much for watching. As always, make sure to drop a sub for more DMZ content and I'll catch you in the next one.